<laughs> Robin. You're listening to Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony on the virus. Serious XM. We got Mr. Shatner uh, outside the studio. Bill Shatner. Get him in here immediately. Oh my god. Wait, wait, wait. Welcome back to the show. So good. There you go. I'm aboard. Captain, captain on the bridge. How are you, captain everybody? Captain on the bridge. How nice to see everybody. <laughs> Mr. Hello. Shatner, hello. Bill. Or Bill, as I like How to call him. How Bill, are you? my good friend, What's going Bill on, Shatner. Bill? Good morning. Back uh, on the Opie and Anthony show. Uh, wow, we were looking at uh, your new your new album. Yeah. I like this. Oh, I hope you do. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's it's out there. It's progressive rock. It's yes. a whole new area that I. I, I wrote the words. Billy uh, Sherwood wrote the music. Mm-hmm. Yes, and he's done a genius job in interweaving mm-hmm. music and and words and and then these great musicians who uh, who've done solo numbers on it. It's, how it's, does this get started? Like, how do you find something like this, a project like this, to do? Well, the the label says to me, uh, "Would you like to do another album?" And, oh. and I said, "Yeah." And they said, "What would you do?" And um, I said, I, I just flashed on a, on a, on an impulse. I guess it's something creative. And I said, mm. uh, I'll write about a guy, uh, sitting on a beach in despair, uh, an hour before sunset. And then the sun sets and, and uh, through the beauty of the, of the night, he regains his joy of life. That, that one line was merely the way I hooked songs together. Hmm. Uh, now that you know, you might recognize it as a progression, but you wouldn't have to know that to to listen to the album and hear the song. So it's a a story. Uh, well, for me, it's a story, through. but 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 not necessarily. Uh, mm-hmm. You know the the order of the songs. I placed the order of the songs so that it made that kind of sense. That you, the opening number, uh, where's it gone? Give it back. I'm missing something. Give it back. Uh, lurches into uh, a, a song of of uh, unhappiness, and then gradually he begins to find, and then he questions. Time, where does time go when time comes to an end? And, and they're all melodic, mm-hmm. and it's all music, but it's progressive rock, so it's pushing some sort of uh, musical envelope. Mm, pushing the and, boundaries. And uh, what do you think? Somebody maybe might be able to partake a little weed and listen to this. And <laughs> I think I think weed would be nice. <laughs> yeah. Weed weed is always nice. <laughs> maybe pop some mollies. <laughs> pop a mollies. Te- tequila. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, whatever whatever uh, name your poison, as they say. Uh, do you indulge? Do you smoke? Uh, no. I mean, uh, you know, uh, no. <laughs> but once you take the opportunity to enjoy oneself, because you only come by once. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Look how well like dressed uh, Bill is. Well, Bill, I, Bill I got some comes television. in here looking great. Is that why? To do, yeah. So I thought um, I'd wear the, the black suit. It's slimming. <laughs> you got like a Johnny Cash thing happening. Yeah, right. right I'm now. doing my Johnny Cash oh, thing. Oh, wow. Yeah, very yeah. nice. Yeah, I'm going to the prison. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're going to go to Folsom Prison and uh, yeah, right. sing, sing, a song. sing a few songs. Oh, right. yeah, you might as well. Uh, about we. <laughs> I have a question. Did you, did you really turn down Richard Branson to he offered you the flight the uh, to go up in, in yeah. the new craft and yeah, you said yeah. no? Well, uh, uh, he said to me, this is some, maybe even a year ago, a couple of years, he said, uh, I've got, I'm going up, I mean, would you like to go up in the, in the airplane? I said, yeah, it sounds like it. He said, it's great, it'll cost you $250,000. Uh, oh, okay. he wants you to pay. Right, so I said, oh, you want me to pay? That's I said, crazy. No, 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 I said, I'll go and you pay me to it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That and, would help uh, the business to have really? Shatner on that. So of course I, I, it would. I never heard from him again. Good for you, uh-huh. Bill. I was going to say uh-huh. Mr. Shatner. <laughs> our, 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 our sheet says that you, you didn't go because you were scared of airline travel. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, I'm taking, uh, I'm a private pilot. I have uh, seven hours in helicopter. I'm learning to fly a helicopter. <laughs> and he's afraid to fly. I think he's uh, watching too much Twilight Zone. I'm, I'm into paramotoring. Which is paramotoring, your, wow. So that's you cool. strap a 75 pound uh, engine on your back, run uh-huh. like hell. You have to run. So you need a prevailing breeze because you got to get to about 13 miles per hour to get uh, 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 flying speed. And you got to kite. That you're holding on to, and you run like hell, usually on a beach because uh, that's where the prevailing breeze sure. is. <laughs> oh, and and you fly about 25 miles an hour. Now you're up in the air with a with a kite. That's crazy. That is Wait, you actually propelled. do this? Yeah, I've done it uh, many times. How high do you go? 
Well, um, you know, there have been some people who got caught in an updraft mm. in a thunderstorm and died of hypothermia. Uh, hypothermia. They, they may have gone as far as uh, as high as 30,000 feet. Oh, uh, with some of those uh, hammerheads, uh, 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 storm uh, can get that Oh, high. yeah, they'll just blast, they'll just blast you right you up. up. Wow. I, I fly gliders as well, and uh, this instructor took me up uh, one time in a thunderstorm, and we were angled pointing straight down and going up. And still going up. Come yeah. on. How scary is that? <laughs> That's scary. Aren't gliders pretty scary in general? No. Uh, they you, seem like it. Well, you, you have to stick around the landing field. You have to land. <laughs> but you have a means of killing uh, the flight uh, by uh, spoilers on the top of the wing. So you can stop flying whenever you want. Mm. So if you come in for a landing and you're sort of like overshooting and you can't go back, you know, there isn't an engine, you pull those uh, those flaps in, in, in effect. And you on, lose lift. And, and you then lose then lift you... almost uh, right away. Wow. So the thunderstorms, Oof. how hot, like you, you're going at a 100, 200 feet and then the thunderstorm can just suck you up? Well, yeah, probably not that low. But you may be, you, you get towed to... 1,200, 1,500, oh. a couple of thousand feet. You get towed up, you release, and then you play around in the thermals. Thermals are columns of air that heat up uh, uh, like a, a, a plowed field will uh, radiate heat more than a green field. So now there's hot air rising, mm. and in that rising air, and you look for the rising air, Either birds or clouds uh, indicate there's rising air, and you have an instrument on your panel that tells you that you're rising or falling. And mm. so, and one time, a long time ago, one time when I was circling in a in a thermal, a hawk got in the same thermal, <laughs> and we were circling each other, big red hawk at me, and he was looking at me, and I was looking at him. It was the most that's incredible pretty moment. cool. Uh, did, yeah. Did you write a song about that? Uh, yeah, for the that new sounds album? like a song. Uh, that's that a song. Of, from... I should have. Huh? <laughs> yeah, what a great I think so. I need, to, I need to do another album. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can call it "Chasing the Hawk," or is he chasing me? Oh, 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 oh very oh, profound, so Jimmy. Profound. Jimmy. That is. How, how big is the circle you're making in these? Uh, well, it depends on the size of the thermal. Wow. Sometimes thermals can be quite large. Sometimes they're six, ten feet across. It just depends. Wow, getting sucked up man. backwards. What did you finally do when you're getting sucked up? How did you guys get down? Well, you fly out of it. And then you descend, and that's how uh, gliders do distances there. You can get a pin, I think it's 750 miles, or you can do 700, so you're rising, going a distance, find another thermal, rise, do another distance, and people fly for forever like that. Oh, and the, limit, the limit is uh, how, how, uh, how long you can stay awake. There <laughs> is another type of flying, um, I've forgotten the term now, but when the wind blows like in Hawaii constantly, like the trade wind, and it hits a cliff and and bounces up it's like water mm -hmm. so you aim your glider into the rising air at a at a angle that is just enough to stop you from going forward or backward and you're continually in the air because that wind is continuous. Just kind of floating. And you're just floating wow. and, and I think the <laughs> limit is like 50 something it was when I was uh, 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 aware uh, it was like two days and then the guy just sitting in one place he, sitting in one place he couldn't wow. stay awake any longer that's wow. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty and, cool. And uh, uh, how long have you been a private pilot? Oh, a long time. A long time. Uh, I was doing, um, I was doing uh, something, a uh, theater thing in uh, in Miami in uh, in the Poinciana Playhouse in uh, Palm Beach, and there's an airfield next door, hmm. and I had always wanted to take lessons. So during the during the day when I wasn't working at night, I was taking lessons. So I soloed there. And went on to fly in hmm. Santa, Santa Monica. And like that. Wow! I got, I got even got, uh, I even got uh, checked out in a uh, biplane in a pit special. It's an aerobatics plane. Oh yeah, I yeah. got checked Santa's. out in an aerobatics plane. I did wow! I did loops and you did, yeah. Cuban rolls. And, <laughs> yeah, it was incredible. Yeah, You're so quite not, the little I'm, daredevil I'm, there. I'm aren't not, you? not afraid to fly, but I just didn't want to be charged that kind of money. Yeah, two hundred fifty uh, large to. Uh, but I was, I was in the 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 desert, the Mojave Desert. Desert, when uh, that uh, uh, that airplane, uh, that uh, t technology was being tried out, oh, and, right. they, and they got into space 100,000 feet. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, they won a prize. They won $10 million. I've forgotten what the name of the competition was, but that that design won uh, $10 million because mm -hmm. they were the first ones in space using chopped up rubber 
and nitric gas, nitric oxide, I think. Instead of oxygen and nitrogen fuel, and all this right. as a fuel, they were using chopped up rubber tires and a gas you can get in your dentists. Yeah, like a, a solid rocket booster they yeah, had exactly. instead of uh, so, so the, liquid, the liquid oxygen. And, liquid oxygen. Yeah, yeah, I guess anything mixed with enough oxygen will burn, so rubber it seems to be a good uh, right. rocket uh, fuel. I guess it was, uh, what, what the... What what the technology is, I don't know, but uh, yeah, but they just blew it out the back end and maybe if you had a few uh, tires over there on the Enterprise, Scotty wouldn't have been up Shit's Creek so many times, you know. <laughs> you go, Scotty, Scotty, get me Chop out of here. Tire. Chop up some tires. I'm chopping tires as fast as I can, you know. Hey, who would think such an archaic way? Of... My God, Bill. <laughs> what's, what's the height you got to get to to be considered uh, breaking the atmosphere? I, I think it's a hundred thousand feet. Oh. Okay. Wow. 100, yeah, yeah. Did you like watch that. the jump, uh, the Red Bull jump? I, I did. Oh, that's I did. That how was insane was that? Well, I, it wasn't insane because he was very careful. He knew what he was doing. He knew I what guess. he was doing. All well, just as a regular, as a regular person, I, I see that as insane. As well, getting it, at Bill. It, it's insane only as so far as you and I are concerned. Right. But he knew what he was doing. Knew what he was doing. Uh, he's a stunt man. He calculated his chances, and look how famous he became. So, yeah. As a means of making a living, mm -hmm. as as being famous for more than the fifteen minutes. Right. Uh, well, when he opened doing. opened that door, and oh, like move forward space. and get ready to jump. My yeah. understanding oh, is that he thought, God. "What am I doing?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's looking down, you know. The and, one thing, and he gets a eight hundred miles an hour. Yeah. He broke sound, right? He broke yeah. sound. He broke ball. gas. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, when, when you look at that view when he opened the door, the thing that has to go through your mind is, I. It looks like I could miss the planet. Like you could just, <laughs> right. if you jump to the side right. a little too much. Right. Or, uh, Imagine if you jumped and just started floating. <laughs> and you'd be like, oh, oh, fuck. Well, what about those guys who uh, wear those wing suits? Yeah, the wing suits and fly that... through holes in the ground. I've seen those guys, and uh, they fly next to mountains. Well, and next to mountains, but there's a guy who went through. I know a which hole. one you're talking about. It was uh, really a couple weeks ago. He he, he like went six through a hole six feet in diameter. Yeah, come right. on. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going, an unbelievable. He's going video. hundreds of miles an hour, wow. and he has to calculate. He's got to get his body oh, together, and, and and he went right and through it. Slipped through That's this thing nuts. like a yeah. needle. Uh, That's crazy. Some threading a needle. Where's the hole in a rock formation? Yeah. Do they jump off the cliff, or they got an aircraft? He jumped mm. off a cliff in this case, I believe. But they do jump out of air. But I've seen those guys jump off the cliff, and then they instead of going away from the cliff, they go right next to it. Right, and, and they've they got the a helmet head camera. Cameras, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a, an amazing view. But you think, wow, you could really you see the screw ones up, that are yeah. ten feet off the ground, and they got their buddies filming them, and they go fucking uh, doing a flyby yeah, over his head yeah. with the wings, yeah. right? Yeah, they're, wow. they're crazy. Yeah, but they must know they have with their experience. I, I, it, it surely must take a lot of strength to keep your arms spread yeah, out at 100 you, you miles. Yeah, you would think that, hour. right? I mean, if you tried it in a car, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then to have a web and on your hands web, like uh, that uh, would really be pushing uh, your arms exactly. back. Exactly. Mm. I think you'd have to be in pretty good shape. And you yeah. know, if you close them, you plummet. I guess that's a motivator. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing keeping me alive. <laughs> <laughs> arms oh God! Out. <laughs> Did you see yeah. uh, Gravity, the movie? No, I haven't seen it yet. I hear it's wonderful. I, I liked it a lot, and not so much. We're still I thought it was today. okay. I thought the effects are amazing. They've come so far with technology and how space looks and how they um, portray weightlessness and, and whatnot in, in, in movies now. It amazes me yeah. how, how they uh, how they do that. Mm. Not that uh, it was ever bad when you were up there, uh, I was Mr. Shatner. From a, uh, from a cable. From a cable. <laughs> <laughs> and you could see the cable and see me turning slowly well, in the wind. Well, I do, I, I do remember um, uh, one... Uh, you're outside the ship, of course, and you're you're floating, and you kept disappearing. Uh, I think that was one with the, the Tholian web, I think. Right. It was the Tholian web. And you were in that funny space suit. It kind of didn't really look like a space suit. Right. It looked like, um, I remember like the carpet waffle padding. The trouble we had was lighting the face. How do you get light yes. on the face? <laughs> so they had like a, a light bulb somewhere. Turn the switch on. <laughs> you got to see Shatner's face. Right. Turn on the light bulb. Oh. Yeah, and floating around there. And I assumed it was uh, by cables or... Sometimes that maybe even I think your hands are just up and you were on the floor doing this, That's and then funny. they just kind of cut your feet off in the shot. Uh, and... I don't remember, but probably <laughs> maybe yeah, I, 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 I want to forget. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you could ever forget that. Oh my God! Well, this uh, you know, for just to come back for a second, uh, this album sure. is, is oh uh, well, of course, is progressive rock. Yeah, and progressive rock, I've come to think of 
as a science fiction of music. Mm. It's pushing the boundaries. It's pushing. It's opening up areas that uh, may not have been uh, there before. In this case, uh, Billy Sherwood, uh, who is a progressive rock genius. Yeah, from Yes. Uh, from Yes. And, and by the way, Tony Kay and, and um, uh, uh, Scott Connor and, uh, and uh, Ricky Tierney uh, form a group called Circa. And I am going to be doing the album with Circa in three uh, venues oh, wow. in the Los Angeles area. Uh, Canoga Park, uh, the Canyon Club uh, is one of them, and 23rd, 24th, and 25th of uh, this month of October, I'll be in the Jeez. Los Angeles area um, performing this album with these wonderful musicians with the idea of seeing how good we are whether we're good enough to go on and mm -hmm. tour and maybe play places like Vegas. That's wow. amazing, yeah. Oh, I would like to see that. Absolutely. I, I'm having such a journey with this album and this music video, which is on uh, YouTube. Shot the music video, uh, you know, on a shoestring and, uh, and, uh, and then... Uh, making the album and now performing the album in front of public the public is a musical journey i've never been on before mm. there is such a mystery in music there is to the people who aren't music uh, or haven't studied or aren't acquainted like uh, somebody was saying uh finding one do you know what that means no and here you are you play records all the time and nor, nor did i well one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, right? Uh huh. So you gotta find one. The drummer has to find one, and the bass guitarist has to find one, and that rhythm. You have to, when do you, how do you know when to come in? How yeah, do you yeah. know after a long solo, do you come in? That is true. It's almost this instinctive thing you kind of no, feel. No, it isn't. Well, yeah, but what if you don't feel good that night? Well, that's true. <laughs> you, you, you don't come in. <laughs> then you get jazz. No, you got to come in. You got to come in. The guy finishes. On the... the guy. You got to start. <laughs> How do you know when to start? It's mysterious. I'm telling you. You yeah, need all yeah, kinds yeah. of help. Mm. So that mystery, not only that, the not one. only the mystery of when to come in. You find, know, the needs of the many one. outweigh the needs of the few They're, or the one. <laughs> That's right. right. The needs of the one outweigh the <laughs> needs of the four or the count of seven. They even have, in this record, they have a count of seven. One, what? two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three. Well, that's not even an even number. That's exactly. <laughs> it's kind of odd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this mystery of rhythm is one. The other mystery for me is I saw Yo-Yo Ma play his cello at the uh, with the Los Angeles Philharmonic yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Have you ever seen him? No, uh, I had a friend. He hit his uh, that's head. Too once, highbrow for us. And he couldn't say anything but Yo-Yo Ma. He kept just blurting it out. Yo-Yo Ma. He hit. Got his head kicked is that by a some true guy. Story? Yeah, and some guy kicked him in the head. And, and he kept uh, saying Yo-Yo Ma. And he said Yo-Yo Ma. I don't know why. What is that? I don't know. It's some kind of a uh, brain thing, I guess. No, no, he wouldn't have said no mas. No, it was yo yo ma. Weird. Yo yo mas. No. No. Well, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yo yo ma, the great cellist, right? So he, I watched him play, and the the cello in his hand and the bow in his other hand, it was like an extension, not only just his mm. body, but of his soul. He played the music. He was. Alive in the music, hmm. uh, and that the mystery of, in this case, the cello, the cat gut, and a horsehair, mm. and this gorgeous sound yeah, emerges. That's, that's we're the amazing. only mm. we're the only animal that does that. There are others, a, other animals that sing and make music with their voice, but who makes a tool to make music, mm -hmm. which? On the surface of it, is, it should be screeching. It just sounds like it would be ridiculous. Ridiculous. Right, we'll take a horse and hair. Yeah, and a, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't play it right, it is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. a little, my grandchild playing the violin, you know. Uh, uh, my grandchild's got violin lessons. She's never really heard a violin. One day mm -hmm. she heard the violin. She said, oh, that's what it's supposed to sound like. <laughs> <laughs> and it really is odd that uh, you could teach someone... No, no, no matter how much uh, they they practice and how much you teach them, they just can't be as good as somebody who has a natural talent for it. So there's just this 
natural ability. I, and that I wonder can't about be that. Taught. Is it a natural ability? Is it is it somebody? Is it a child who lets, or I guess an adult who lets themselves be totally open mm. to the experience, so that they go with the experience rather than saying, "Ooh, that is, I'm not good," and uh, and get self conscious and and restricts themselves, whether no matter what the skill is. Maybe well, that's some, it. Yeah, yeah. But that's more. It is kind of a difference between something mathematical and something spiritual. You know, is it exactly. something that could be Taught. looked at in an equation? Yeah. Yeah. Or is it a more spiritual exactly. thing? Exactly. So yeah. that mystery of the music mm-hmm. is the journey I'm on now. Yeah. Discovering I'm I'm into the words, but uh, Billy Sherwood composing the music and knitting music and words together. It's is, like an undiscovered country. Yeah. Well, it <laughs> was the best of all those movies. You know? I liked that one. I did. I liked them all. What do you listen Please. to? What do you listen to? Uh, what kind of music? Well, I'm probably a jazz enthusiast. Oh, you like yeah, jazz. yeah. And hates hmm. jazz. I don't like jazz. I, I want to like jazz. You, know, you can't. can't hate jazz. He well, hates jazz. it. I don't hate it, but I can't. <laughs> no, 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 no. You can't. He hates. You can't this guy hates hate it. jazz. You can't. I um. No, no. You're not listening yeah. to music that pleases you. <sighs> jazz takes so many forms. You can't hate jazz. Jazz could be the blues. I mean, well, jazz, I know he doesn't like the blues either. I, I, jazz I mean, to me. He can't hate the blues. He hates the blues. He likes disco. Jazz is upbeat. I don't like disco. He loves guns though. I don't like disco. Go. It begins and ends with Donna Summer. No. <laughs> I, I don't like it when it sounds like everybody in the band is playing something completely different. No, it sounds but, very but, self-indulgent. All right, so listen, in, on one of the cuts, mm-hmm. Al Demiola, the great jazz guitarist, is on, on, on my record. Ooh. Al Demiola is playing on my album, uh, Pond of the Mystery. He plays a, 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 a lick on one of the songs. It's fantastic. Uh, as, as, uh, Steve Vai. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Playing yeah. guitar mm-hmm. in the opening number makes me weep with the wrenching feeling of his electric guitar. Which one is he mm-hmm. on? Is He's he on the first one. Where It's Gone? Where It's Gone. Is that the one we should play today? Uh, play that. Play, okay. that. play that. It's uh, When we're done here, we're going to do that for you. Okay. Yeah, definitely. You know, I was watching uh, Columbo the other night. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> there was uh, Dr. Janice Lester and Tupring. The uh, Vulcan uh, Bride on the same episode. That's impossible. I mean, I, I've I never said. seen them together. I've never seen them together either, but there it was. I'm like, this is like a Star Trek cavalcade I'm watching on Columbo. You were in a Columbo, too. I was in more than one. I, yeah. More than one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were great shows. The only bad thing about it, you missed the first five minutes, you might as well not watch the show. The problem, the difficulty <laughs> with that show, uh, and the problem for writing for it, was... Mm. You, the audience, knew who did it, yes. and you had to watch with fascination while the character in the in the movie figures it out, knows what yes. you already know, right? And that was the difficulty in in uh, in writing. They part. pulled it off, though. Oh, yeah. it, uh, mm-hmm. it it works. It's it's a fun show to watch. Uh, great, great uh, character, and then you just see people from you know f- from old episodes of. Bonanza and yeah, uh, Star well, everybody Trek wanted and, to do it. it and was yeah, an yeah. hour and a half. It paid well, uh-huh. you know, and it was uh, well written. So yeah. you wanted to be on some, that show. Some really good directors too. <laughs> where uh, you'd, you'd watch the credits and see like oh, everybody my God, tried Spielberg out. Spielberg yeah. did yeah, uh, yeah. Some really. That. Spielberg. Well, Spielberg started off in uh, at Universal doing uh, right little movie. They film. did Duel that movie Duel, Duel. with uh, Peter Matt. It was uh, the uh, McLeod who yeah, played yeah, McLeod, yeah. that guy. Yeah, uh, the guy with the limp. The guy with the limp <laughs> and the little mu- Dennis Weaver. Thank Dennis you, Weaver. sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, and he did. He directed Duel. Right, uh, and and uh, Peter Matheson uh, wrote it. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And uh, these were all great names of people just starting their career at the time. Yeah, yeah. that uh, Night Gallery was another right. show. Rod Serling's Night Gallery. There was a lot of. Uh, uh, young at the time directors that yeah. were doing that. I actually wanted to ask about Rod Sterling yeah. um, because we kind of have a fascination with him here. What was he like to to be around? Well, I wish I could say <laughs> that um, he was a mentor to everybody. Uh, you know, I, I, I was as you were asking me, I thought, well, would I make up? Uh, he was a child molester. That won't go well. Yay. So, so, <laughs> no, I better not. His, his widow will uh, will sue me. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, you, what you're asking is, I as a young actor, just sort of beginning and knocking on doors, what did I think of the producer, uh, who was up in the building and I mm. never, the, up in the bu- offices I never got to? 
<laughs> but uh, <clears throat> in this case, I had worked with him and uh, and a, a group of the people that he took with him from live television to film when he was doing uh, Twilight Zone. So I had worked with Rod in live television. In the latter part of the live television days, I, I, I came... I came from Canada, and I did Playhouse 90 and uh, all those hour shows that were famous at the time. And he and a host of people whose names you would recognize from movies were there beginning their career, just like you're saying now about mm -hmm. these early film stuff. They they were burgeoning. So I did get to know him a, a little bit. Uh, a cool guy, uh, a, a short in stature, enormous uh, talent, uh, creative talent as a writer, and uh, he did mentor a lot of people. How mm. long did it take you to film that famous episode, the Man of the Way episode? They were all three, four, five days maybe. Uh, yeah, that... Uh, uh, Wow. And being a pilot, you know, you'd know what the stupid little furry no, guy no, no, could no. do. No, 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 being afraid of flying, according <laughs> to Armas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where those things come from, but it's the, it, it's insane. It makes you think how all the stuff we want to believe, you know, so and so was, right, was right, sleeping right. with so and so. Oh yeah, right. yeah. It's, uh, you know, it, it's you know, so much of it's made up. I, I don't know where they get it from. <laughs> yeah, I know. like afraid of flying. I mean, I, how would yeah? If they do a little research, they could tell that you. I'll that one out. Right. Hey, did the little man? Who is the little man in the costume on the wing? <laughs> did you get to know him at all? So he's a Czechoslovakian, or was a Czechoslovakian acrobat. Oh wow! Yeah, in a little furry suit that was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was ridiculous. Yeah. Standing, you know, you'd think they they'd give him wings or or uh, some streamlining or something. Yeah, he was a little panda bear <laughs> <laughs> on the edge of a wing, trying to. And when he flew off, yeah. Yeah, he just they just kind of pulled him up and <laughs> right. out of frame. Right, exactly, <laughs> and, and and like you were uh, saying, our special effects were so bad, which tells you that the audience is willing to suspend disbelief mm -hmm. on anything if the story is good enough. Right, right. Mm. The 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 biggest thing uh, problem I had with the episode was. Just tell the wife, who's so concerned with, with her husband at the time, because he had this nervous breakdown, look, sit here and look out the window the whole flight. Just stay there. Don't move. There. Problem solved. But Either no. she sees it, or it never shows up again, and he's fine. Yeah, but, but she was so tired, she had to sleep. Oh, she had it with you. She had to sleep. She had narcolepsy. Or something. And, and it, really, it really shows how far we've gone, because the, uh, the, the sky marshal, or whatever he was, the cop that was on board the plane, he's asleep with his gun just hanging out in the uh, in the aisle. Yeah. Uh, what a what a and yet iconic and yet, episode. Right? Why? Yeah. Why? why? It, no, no, what is the answer to I why? I think the story uh, hits home with a fear of flying, a fear of the unknown. It it didn't matter that the effects weren't that good, or and a fear of not being heard, seeing right, something that's right. wrong and saying it, and nobody believing Ooh, you were listening to you. That's interesting. So yeah. You must have had a lot of that in your life. I, I, I have it every day in my life, actually, continually. I tell a woman I'm perfect for you, and she just doesn't hear me. My favorite, my favorite scene in that whole episode is when the co-pilot, I guess, comes out and he's talking, and you, go, and you say, "There's a, a man out there," and he goes, "We know." We've seen, and he goes, and and you go, oh, oh, you've seen it, oh, okay, <laughs> like you're all thrilled that he finally saw, and then you realize, oh, he's bullshitting me. <laughs> hey, would you? No, I've never thought of that, but you're absolutely right. I bet it's. Uh, I told him that. <laughs> no, you didn't. He, he said it was about a fear of hairy men on wings. I'm like, you're an idiot. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, God. Yeah, maybe he's seeing something that no one else sees. Because Sterling yeah, yeah. had that weird, uh, you know. Cause we Not being heard. Uh, you know, yeah. how many children. Uh, that's got to be such a basic. Uh, impulse. You, you don't think about that, but children at a table who say, "I got uh, 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 let me," and the adults are all talking, not even and, and nobody's them. listening to them, and yeah. uh, that rage and frustration of not being heard yeah. has got to be something we carry with us for the rest of our lives. Yeah. Well, look at that. Yeah. A little, That's um, what I do. I just analyze. <laughs> How about uh, would you would you talk to the little Czechoslovakian guy? Like, I'm fascinated with that guy. <laughs> You would talk to him at like craft services or um, uh, <laughs> uh, the 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 primitiveness of the technology didn't occur to me then. Yeah. And uh, uh, looking at it now, I I I don't know why I didn't think 
This is so idiotic. I'm embarrassed to be in this. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel every but, day here. <laughs> <laughs> but then you just have to look around. <laughs> they're saying we got to wrap up. Oh, God. Bill, they're saying you got to go. You got TV Bill's to Bill's very busy today. I got a day. I'm promoting... Ponder the mystery. Yes, yes. But this is really worth promoting. It's a it's a terrific album. It's gotten great reviews, by the way. Make a good Christmas gift, Bill. A great Christmas Very gift. Very good. It's a meaningful album. It means you really love the person mm -hmm. you're giving it to. Absolutely. And you look damn good on the cover there. I so. know. Hey, pretty good, huh? Looking yeah, there right, is man. a very uh, regal that. kind of... With the sun behind him, shining through him, basically. Ca Captain look, or perhaps even the Admiral. Admiral! <laughs> oh, was he mad that you were an Admiral? Boy, was Con pissed. Sorry, Bill, I you know. The great Bill Shaft. Bill Thank Shaft? you. Tell him, Fred. <laughs> the virus. Sirius XM. This is the Opie and Anthony Show.